Brian, great to see you. I mean, the stock down to today, a, a, along with pretty much everything. Um, clearly, these traditional auto names have performed very well, though, over the last year or so, playing a bit of catch up to, to the Teslas of this world. Uh, my question as they bring out this new model is just, are we now back into a phase where there's unbelievable competition within just small pockets like EV pickups? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that competition is increasing. And in fact, in the note we put out earlier today, we compared it to the 1920s, where you had dozens of car companies. The strategy GM pursued there is much like the strategy they're pursuing now, which is offer a wide range of products, but with common underpinning, and use that to go after the small, smaller players as well as the market leader at that time, which, of course, was the Model T. So really, while the Silverado Bev, you know, you could debate, is it better or worse than the F-150? Um, you know, the point is, it's just one vehicle in a much broader EV lineup coming from GM. What a well-received announcement yesterday from Ford that they were up updating its capacity, upgrading its capacity for the F-150 Lightning. So, Brian, which stock do you want to be in? Ford has so much outperformed GM over the last 12 months, but both have done quite well. I mean, we frankly have overweights on both. I mean, I think the big question is, we're between the eight and a half to nine PE of Ford and the about 300 PE of Tesla is the right multiple for an auto stock that is active in the EVs. You know, the advantage Ford has is they, well, it's a Skunk Works product. It's not a scalable platform yet at this point. They are first to the market and made important progress in transitioning the brand from an ICE brand that, of course, dates back nearly a century, over a century, into an EV brand. GM's a bit later, but has a much more solid underpinning of platform economics. What, what is the, the, the P multiple on, on both these companies, GM and Ford now? Are they still relatively cheap? I mean, certainly compared to, to Rivian and Lucid, but, but are they getting kind of expensive compared to their own recent history? Uh, compared to recent history, I mean, they're still uh, even you know, about half the multiple of the overall S&P 500. You know, I think if you go back to the recent history, there were a lot of balls of worry that really aren't around anymore. You know, first that they all, GM went bankrupt, Ford nearly went bankrupt, they could go bankrupt again. They showed in COVID that they could power through that. Then the second argument was robo-taxis are going to put them out of business. They both have interesting robo-taxi subsidiaries, as you all know. And then finally, the thinking was Tesla is going to be the iPhone dominating 70, 80 percent of the EV market. They still are that in the U.S. If you look at Europe and China, strong share, but 15 percent. So the idea that there's no room for either Ford or GM in the EV endgame is, I also think, being put to rest. All of that uh, bodes well, we think, for multiple expansion. What is baked in to these prices and, and others in terms of consumer adoption of EVs? It does feel like we're at a turning point and it's growing very fast, especially if you look at Tesla's numbers lately. But, but where is the market versus what, what actually might happen? Yeah, I, I don't think you need heroic EV assumptions. In fact, the people who are deep into the auto stocks still debate the relative economics of producing a gas pickup truck versus an EV pickup truck. So if the EV take-up is slower, then they still have the very profitable ICE businesses. If it's faster, they both have plans to transition factories into the EV world. Brian Johnson, we'll leave it there. Thank you for joining us on GM Today. Thank you.